All right, I'm gonna keep it 100. I got tired of the small updates, so we went crazy. Um, We got headers in, we got spark plugs. It's, it's pretty much that time. That's all I think, I hope. Um, missing one thing though, got a bolt plugged off in there right now. It's a little nipple for this guy to hook up to. I don't know how detrimental that is. I know, it's, I mean, it's obviously airflow and across the, the uh, well, it's aftermath, so I'll have to ask Mark on that, but uh, we got oil in it. <sighs> Should be fuel in it. Got belts on. Like I said, man, it's pretty much the time. I don't think it doesn't have its water. I'm gonna make sure this thing does what it's supposed to do first before I get to that point. I got a clutch fluid in it. Like I said, well, power steering, so it's already there and it's gonna be spinning the pump and I don't want it to cavitate, so went ahead and filled that up. But I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I'm terrified right now. <laughs> I am terrified. I still got the fuse out for the fuel pump, so it should not do that. But um we're gonna get a couple kicks over as far as uh just you know spinning it over so the um oil to get everywhere it's supposed to get. I did uh, pour a quart down in the valley and I tried to, um, I tried to fill it some here over here in the side of the block on that, that plug. So fingers crossed, it's not dry and hurts anything off rip. Uh, yeah, I just hit Nate, gonna pull up on him and go grab, in, grab the plug in deal to uh, take the stock file off of this thing and send it over to Mark, let him make his changes. So uh, I'm gonna get cleaned up and changed for that. And yeah, I guess we'll see what happens today, maybe. Oh yeah, I don't like this feeling. <laughs> I really hope everything's okay, man. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and stop playing and get this stuff done, I guess. Check in with y'all later. All right, I couldn't do it while I was recording with y'all because my stomach is in knots, but I just spun the motor over. Uh, I didn't hear anything crazy. It didn't do anything crazy. So, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm about to go start with the truck. Like I said, head over to Nays, go grab some stuff, and then I guess I'll let y'all know. All right. File has been sent off to Father Timon. Shout out to my boy Nate for letting me loan the plug in. Uh, I'm gonna run to the store because I need some groceries after coming back from that trip. So I'm gonna handle that, do some cleaning around the house while we wait for a file. Oh my God, this is so weird staring at this thing sitting here like this. Ugh, I am extremely, I wanna say extremely, but I'm a little nauseous. <laughs> I do not want to do this, but I have to. I'm going to clean up a little bit in here, too. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for now until we get a file from Father Time and himself. And then we'll see what happens. I will keep you guys updated. But, um, yeah, let me clean up a little bit. Run these errands that I got to run. And then uh, hopefully or maybe by then we'll have a file that we can load on here and see what it does. guys it's monday after work day two of trying to get this thing to run i got bad news man bad bad news i'm gonna have to drop the uh driver's side tank again rented this guy hooked it up pulled the trailer valve all that good stuff and uh, I jumper wired the uh, the relay for the fuel pump, turned it on. You can hear it clear as day, it's pretty loud. And it didn't even budge, literally didn't even move. And so uh, when I pulled this guy off, got a little fuel here. See, it dripped down. So it wasn't enough, it's not making enough, which is probably why this thing will not start. So. 
I mean, not probably. You can't run anything with no fuel pressure. So I'm going to go drop this off, make me something to eat. And honestly, I'm just going to slow poke it, man. I mean, it's not like I've been rushing anything this whole time, but it's just really a downer that I have to do that because that is a very difficult job if you've never done it. And I really don't want to, to be honest with you, especially getting this close and putting this much stuff on here, thinking you're finally done at the finish line and then have to go backwards a million steps, I feel like. So, yeah, I'm going to digest this and then get as much done as I can when I feel like it, I guess. But um, obviously I can't let it sit for too long. I mean, I have goals that I'm trying to hit and to reach that this car has to get done and leave so it's gonna get done I just can't say when but uh yeah let me go handle this other stuff I gotta do garage should be warmed up good by the end and then we'll get started on dropping that tank and try to figure out what the heck's going on all right gang Woo, them fumes good god one thing about me man I'm gonna do this for the flame, fame and the clout. I try to help out the next guy. But um, one thing that I do differently from everybody else, I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, the ugly. And I'm gonna keep it 100. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. Oh, the tank is on the ground. Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. It didn't take me that long. Well, it kinda did, but not really. It just made me mad more than anything because I know how much of a fight it was to put it together and I know that Crossover 2 is gonna fight me again. But that's besides the point. So, I'm gonna do a really quick tutorial. I'm gonna try to. I got food going. So, I can't be out here for too long. Well, I'm gonna do a real quick tutorial on how to drop a saddlebag tank or one of these things, at least a driver one. The passenger side is almost rinse repeat. But uh, anyways, first thing you wanna do, take your rear sway bar off. You got two 18s on each clamps, and then you got the, uh, the end links right there. Take that off, you got your two clamps right here. Well, not clamps, hangers. Don't mind that wire. Uh, these hold the, the muffler up in the car like such. Take those two guys out. Loosen your connections on the exhaust. Right there and there. So you can slide it forward. I don't have the front half connected, so I don't have to worry about that. But if you do, you're going to have to worry about that. So I got a gap in there. And if you know these, this midsection is on springs, so it moves. So swinging it forward, pushing it forward, and also, sorry, pulling this back and fighting this down, what that does is allows, it gives you room to get up with your arm in hand in between here. So you see how we have this gap of space here, but we don't over there. That's why you move the exhaust. There's your crossover tube that goes into here. You see that, that locking ring right there? that locks in here, pulls it together, holds it together. And then you have your hose connection right here. But before you get to dropping this tank, you got that plate right there. That plate right there, it's got your, your bolts that go around. And then uh, there's some over on the other side as well. You got some here, here. There's another one over in the corner, like such. So you'll pull those bolts out, drop that plate, and then the tank will be able to come down but before you even do that, sorry, we're working in reverse order right now, but uh, you're gonna have to pull this fender liner out. So pull the fender liner out. Yes, you're gonna have to mess with this vent here. And then your fuel neck, there's another push connect fitting here. And then your main power plug, your harness plug. And you'll be able to pull the tank out. Then you'll get to the point to where I'm at and you need a fuel disconnect tool for that connection right there, which is on the way right now. Shout out to Nate. So 
we're waiting on that. That's why I went inside and started making me something to eat. Once I get that disconnected, I'll pull this tank away from up under the car. We'll pop that off, and then we'll try to figure out what the heck is going on here. Um, oh, I don't know why I'm thinking that I filled you guys in on what's going on. I was on the phone with Mark, not talking to y'all. But basically, long story short, something in the tank is not right. I think we both think, well, I know for sure it did this at least once because we're in the situation that we're in now. That tank is empty. So of course it's not gonna run because the fuel pump is in this tank. There's only one fuel pump on this car. On the other side is a fuel level. So this guy, empty. So what I'm thinking to happen is that this, this side pumped all the fuel over to the other side and filled that tank. So when I was trying to run this car and start it, I was hearing like water being poured on the floor, but there was the floor was completely dry. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. What I was hearing was a fuel being pumped out of this tank over to that empty tank over there. So it literally transferred itself. How, why, I don't know. We're hopefully going to get into that and figure out why and how that even how that's even possible. But I'm pretty sure that's what happened because, like I said, fill neck. It's over here. I put 10 gallons in this thing. This should not be empty. So that's our dilemma. I'm going to pull this apart, take a look in there, see what I see. And then we'll go from there. But... Yeah, that's pretty much all I got right now. Uh, definitely still pretty annoyed and upset that I took this car this much apart to get into this, to figure this out. But I'm pretty sure once I resolve this issue and figure it out, we're going to be fine. The car's going to fire up. So Mark has to play with the tune because he was playing with it pretty, pretty hard trying to get it to uh, fire off beforehand adding fuel in when in reality, yes, it was starving for fuel, but not tune wise. It was starving for fuel because of herself. So once I figure this all out, he dies the tune back. We should have a running car, hopefully. But yeah, once I figure out more and figure out what the heck's going on, I'll let you guys know. But for now, I'm gonna wait for him to pull up. And like I said, I got some food going, so I'm gonna try to at least get dinner cooked or half of it cooked or whatever. Try to make some progress. I'm not trying to be in here all night. So I will see y'all when I see y'all. All right, it's getting late. Um, so I'm gonna do this quick. I hit up a forum and I asked some questions. The guy on there was saying that my problem was in the, the passenger tank. So I had to go ahead and drop this thing. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know what I'm looking for, what I'm supposed to see, but I'm calling it a night. Look into it and hopefully figure it out tomorrow. Um, so far, the only thing that I seen that was a problem was um, it pulled out. Shoot, it's probably stuck now. That. So that was when I was trying to disconnect the crossover from there. It's all I've seen so far. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be looking for. Excuse this mess, but yeah, I'm over it. I'm gonna go to bed and hopefully between now and tomorrow when I get to working on this thing, I'll figure something out or come up with something. I don't know, but. That's all I got. I'll catch up later. Jesus. This place is a freaking mess. It's driving me insane. But anyways, in and off the day, another night, unsuccessful, not running. Um, so on the phone with Mark, <clears throat> shout out to him and this random guy on Facebook. It's been helping me out. So I figured this thing out, pulled a spark plug, set a rag down there, unplugged the coil so it wouldn't fire and uh, we're not getting fuel. So I'm not getting a switched ground at any of these injectors. And on that side, I'm getting like 0.3 and then when it decides to fire off the injector, like 1.3 volts. 
So that's why the car kind of sort of starts, but not really, because when it's doing that 1.3, it's putting a little bit of fuel in the cylinder only on one bank. So that's what we got going on right now. I think I figured out my pressure issue. All I did different this time was change a hose from the pump to the uh, the hat. This guy right here. Yeah, not the best design. I was able to pull it off by hand. So I think it makes good pressure now. Seems fine. So uh, all that stuff is just rigged on the floor right now. I'm trying to make sure that this thing starts and runs before I put that crap back together and put it back in the car. But uh, I gotta figure out this whole voltage issue with these injectors, so. More research to be done, more figuring out another late night. So I'm gonna get out of here, go to bed, shower, tired, really annoyed. But it is what it is, part of the game, I guess.